have His Excellency Brigadier David Granger, President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, Minister of State, the Honorable Joseph Harmon, the Minister of Communities, Honorable Ronald Bulkan. His Excellency will now read a statement. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the media. You know, these elections are very important to all Guyanese. Some people regard elections as an opportunity to flaunt their personality. Some have proclaimed that it was an exercise in ethnicity, but we say it's an exercise in democracy. The local government elections of Friday, the 18th of March, were not only the duty of our government, but were a victory for democracy and an opportunity for inclusionary governance. The elections were a return to constitutionality after a lapse of nearly two decades under the previous administration. Citizens' entitlement to participate in the decision making in their municipal and neighborhood councils has now been restored. The coalition comprising a Partnership for National Unity and the Alliance for Change, struggled on the street, in the regions, and in the National Assembly for the restoration of local democracy. We are happy to achieve this democratic objective in less than 10 months after entering office. The historic elections were a reassurance of the coalition's commitment to continue our work First, to empower our citizens in accordance with the Constitution of Guyana to freely exercise their right to elect representatives of their choice to local councils. Second, to ensure that the three levels of government, central, regional, and municipal, through regular, general, and regional elections and local government elections, can begin to work for the common good rather than against each other. Third, to establish new tongues at Mabaruma, Bartica, and Lethem, to provide public services and to propel the economic development of their respective regions and to make sure that each region is administered by a capital tongue with its own mayor and tongue council. And fourthly, to enable the 10 regions of Guyana to embark on coherent economic development programs in concert with both the central government and municipal administrative organs. The coalition would like to thank all Guyanese for the purposeful and peaceful manner with which they participated in the elections. We thank all candidates who competed for office. We thank all political parties, groups, and individuals for their participation. We thank the Guyana Elections Commission and its staff for their sedulous preparation and supervision of the elections. We, all of us Guyanese, can now look forward with confidence to a new era of domestic, of the democratic governance of our country. I thank you. The Minister of State, Mr. Joe Harmon, will now make a brief statement. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, um, I fully endorse what the His Excellency President Granger has said. I would just wish to add three points to um, what His Excellency has just said. First is that I want to underscore the point that the people of Guyana won these elections. That it was a clear demonstration of what we in the AP and UAFC administration and what His Excellency had termed the year of democratic renewal. At the level of central government, we had general elections where you had democratic renewal at, the, at, the, at that level. Then secondly, in a very short space of time after we came into office, we had elections for the two show councils in this country. And now, at this final level of renewal, the local government elections for neighborhood democratic councils 
and, um, and the tongues. So that at every level of political organization in the country, in a very short space of time, we were able to ensure that democratic renewal. Secondly, we are very encouraged by the number of young persons who came out to challenge for leadership in their communities. We believe that this is a very positive step and that as an administration, as a government, we would wish to embrace all of these persons, irrespective of which political party, group, or individuals where they came from, we would wish to embrace all of them to ensure that our communities are better managed and that they are part of that process where they contested. Thirdly, the question of the organization of these elections by the Ghana Elections Commission is something that I think is worth commending. It was much better organized, even in the, in the, in the polling places, the organization was, much, was a little different, and it, in my view, was very efficient. So I believe as we move forward as a nation, we are getting better with a number of things. The administration of elections are becoming, as it should in any democratic country, a part of natural life. And therefore, there should be no shock waves every time an election comes around. Um, in the next three years, we'll have another set of local government elections. And so the lessons that have been learned from this exercise will be one which will benefit all of Guyana as we move forward. So like the President, I would like to con congratulate all of Guyana for embracing this opportunity to be part of local government and to be part of the exercise of managing the communities in this country. I thank you. Mr. Ronald Bulkan, the Minister of Communities, will now make some brief remarks. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the media. The successful holding of local government elections yesterday marked and made yesterday a historic day in the history of our country. Uh, it represented a victory for the two decades long struggle for the return and restoration of local democracy. I wish to take this opportunity to thank and congratulate all of those who participated in this process, beginning with uh, all of the candidates who volunteered and who stepped forward to offer themselves uh, to serve their communities in positions of leadership on a voluntary basis. Uh, next, I'd like to also congratulate all of the voters who participated in this process uh, arising out of their desire to see improvement, improvements in, their, in the conditions uh, within their communities and to see that there is improvement in the management and development of their communities. And it is by participating and uh, electing councillors that they uh, will be able to achieve this. And thirdly, I'd like to congratulate the successful candidates who will now become councillors within our 62 NDCs and nine municipalities upon whose shoulders will rest the perhaps onerous duties of discharging the responsibilities to ensure that our towns and communities are safer, cleaner, and viable. As uh, both the, the President and the Minister of State have said, the results of the elections of yesterday do not represent a victory for any party, but rather they represent a victory for the people of Guyana. Uh, if I may say, as far as the coalition candidates, as well as uh, successful ones in particular are concerned, uh, the, those results represent an opportunity for those persons to serve the residents of their constituency, uh, which it will be recalled is how uh, Our Excellency described the results of the 2015 general and regional elections, namely that they represent an opportunity for the administration to serve the people of Guyana. Uh, it also, as far as the coalition, successful coalition candidates are concerned, it offers them an opportunity 
to participate and to lead in the process of the renewal of our communities and the reversal of the decay that has beset our communities as a result of uh, the collapse in the local government system as a result of the stresses that has been placed on it. As far as the Ministry of Communities is concerned, um, more particularly, uh, yesterday's exercise represents the first of uh, three components in the restoration and the repair and the rehabilitation of the collapse system of local government, uh, namely with the democratic renewal of the life of our councils. Uh, just briefly, going forward, the other two main components, as has been identified and articulated by me previously, are secondly to ensure that there is institutional strengthening and building of capacity within this uh, new councils and the core of councillors who are coming into office with a great degree of enthusiasm, uh, but probably uh, lacking the requisite experience to be able to manage uh, the affairs of their community and therefore they're going to need support from the central government and in particular from the ministry. Uh, and thirdly, of course, the third component of that rehabilitation uh, effort will be the question of financing as to how our respective councils are, do have access to sufficient financial resources which will uh, largely determine how successful they are in discharging the responsibilities towards um, the residents of their communities. Uh, of course, it is no secret that the AP and UN in opposition had placed the question of local government and the return of local democracy at the centerpiece of our efforts. And it will be recalled that it was then leader of the opposition himself, Brigadier Granger, who had personally led uh, picketing exercises on the street uh, just outside of this compound for an extended period of time, calling for the holding of local government elections. And um, our president has been able to deliver on that commitment of his in ensuring that these elections are held uh, within 10 months of coming into office, uh, largely, I believe, out of his unshakable conviction that uh, local democracy and human development are not only intertwined, but that they are inextricable. And uh, I have here with me uh, one of the many booklets that has been authored by His Excellency, uh, which of course shows him participating in those picketing exercises last year. So uh, yesterday was a historic day in the history of our country, and we do believe that the presence of meaningful local democracy uh, will be a very important vehicle in achieving the social cohesion that is so necessary for us to be able to not only move forward but progress as a society um, and to, if you will, ensure that the, the lack of that uh, social cohesion, which has largely eluded us in the last 50 years, that uh, meaningful local democracy can uh, successfully assist in that quest. And uh, I note that the president has alluded to uh, some influential uh, stakeholders in our country, seeing that uh, issues in, uh, in terms of ethnicity, but as I said, our councillors uh, contested those elections on the unshakable uh, principle and belief that they see their role is to serve our communities, that these councils will not be a rival to the central government. And um, I note that the leader of the opposition has uh, in remarks, public remarks yesterday stated that he sees as a priority of his um, political party to, uh, that they, to intensify their campaign to regain the seat of central government. And I'd, I'd just like to say that it's unfortunate because local government is an important vehicle. Uh, it is not meant to be a rival to the central government and it's actually uh, a gateway 
to the good life. And this is what our successful candidates and councillors intend to discharge to the people of their constituencies. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now entertain questions. I'll ask you to state your name and your media house and use the microphone. I recognize Mr. Jomo Paul. Jomo Paul, Damar Ribs. Uh, from the reports we've seen thus, thus far about the results of the elections, it would appear as though the persons that were backed by the two major political parties, PUP and the APUFC, have won at the, in their constitu constituencies. Uh, Mr. President, uh, do you think uh, this is so because those persons receive the endorsement of those political parties? Those persons, thank you, um, Mr. Paul. Those Okay. Those persons share our vision for clean, green communities. They share our vision for an integration of the work of central, regional, and municipal councils in the achievement of a high quality of governance. They share our vision for strong regions. Um, that is what I saw coming out of the persons who uh, came over to the side of the coalition. We have never uh, prevented or obstructed any individual um, from participating or any group from participating. But yes, I would say that people who share our vision um, will receive our encouragement. Um, people who try to divide and obstruct us, well, we, we're not going to encourage them to obstruct our, our, our work. But we didn't move against them. So you're quite right. Um, uh, there were people who want to see Guyana become clean again. They have seen the example of the Georgetown municipality and many people in New Amsterdam and Linden and Bartica and Mabaruma would like to see um, the, their, their tongues uh, develop along those lines. You're quite right, Mr. Paul. Kurt Campbell. Kurt Campbell, News Source. Good morning, Mr. President. Um, two days before yesterday's elections, the APNU withdrew its support for Mr. Harding. Um, the results in this constituency show that he would have won. Could you say if the APNU would take a decision to recall him once he gets to city council? The matter will be discussed within the um, PNCR and the, our partners with the APNU before we proceed on it. Uh, an announcement has already been made. We stand by the announcement which has been made. And at this point in time, I cannot uh, go beyond that announcement until it has been uh, discussed within the PNC councils and within APNU. Good morning, Mr. President. Um, two questions. Um, with relation to uh, the voter turnout, based on the feedback we would have gotten from the ground, um, a lot of people did not turn out to vote. Um, your concerns about this and what might have been the deciding factor. And with relation to Mr. Harding, there have been calls to Mr. Valda Lawrence to resign from her post as the minister. How would you respond to that? Could I ask you, Mr. Steve? Yes. yes. <clears throat> the question of, um, of the voter turnout. Uh, historically, at uh, local government elections, the voter turnout has been lower than they are for national and regional elections. <clears throat> so that the, the turnout this time around, in, in our view, was, was even better than had been anticipated. <clears throat> um, the intensity of, of the campaigns, in particular in the, in the townships, in particular in the townships, you'll find that there was a higher turnout in the township as opposed to the um, the other NDCs. <clears throat> and this is so because of the vibrancy of the debates which took place, the fact that there, was, um, there were challenges from independent groups, political parties, and, um, and uh, other uh, individuals, <clears throat> that that in fact, I believe, energized the, the population. But this might have come a little bit late because um, I think because people had actually not voted for so long in local government elections. A number of them felt well, that you know, this was not necessary. Some of them felt that, well, um, they just voted in the national elections and therefore they have the government of their choice and therefore they don't need to do this. <clears throat> but I think that 
um, now the, the process has started again, that people, after they recognize what is happening in their communities and the fact that the people who have been elected are the ones who will have to champion their causes in the communities, I believe that it will all go well for the next round, which will take place in another three years. <clears throat> so it is really a, a, a fresh start almost where local government elections are concerned. And um, as I said, we hadn't had these elections for over 17 years. So a number of the persons who are actually voting were voting in local government elections for the first time. Uh, so that the, the low turnout um, has been attributed to a number of things. Some people have said that um, the voter education component of these elections was not enough, that more ought to have been spent on it. But in, in my humble um, view, and in my own experience, I found that in local government elections, that in the last two or three weeks, that's when people get busy. And irrespective of how much voter education you actually put out there, that they only get busy in the last two or three weeks. Additionally, the, 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 the type of voting which took place, they had um, the PR component and then you had the constituency component. All of these things needed to be explained. And I believe it was not until very late that some people got the message and then they decided to come out. Some others did not get it, but what we believe is that the whole uh, results of what has happened here over the last, uh, over yesterday, will encourage other persons to offer themselves up for leadership in the communities and will encourage other persons the next time around to ensure that they vote. <clears throat> you see, in the communities also there's another power, which is a power if in the event that your representative, they're not representing you well, you have the power to have them recalled by calling for a vote in your communities. So that this is something which people now will now get to understand what is the real power of local democracy, what is the power of local government elections, and the reason why they should come out in larger numbers the next time around. So as I said, the, the, the numbers um, were, were in fact low. But I don't think that they were lower than any other time when we had elections. I believe, in fact, in the townships that the turnout was even higher than they were in, in the last elections, last local government elections. Could I ask the Minister of uh, Communities to add to that? Uh, I think it's a bit premature to pronounce on the level of voter turnout, uh, because I note that GCOM has not yet given an overall percentage um, in relation to the turnout. But on the Essequibo Coast, uh, where I spent the greater part of yesterday after having voted in my constituency, uh, namely Constituency 9 in the Eccles Ramsborg NDC, uh, I be, I, I'm of the belief that the turnout on the Essequibo Coast was probably uh, maybe close to 40%. And if indeed the overall turnout of these elections, um, when that figure is known, is in that vicinity, or probably even a little higher, I noticed from today's paper, there's a speculation that it's uh, below 50%. I would see that as a very high turnout. Um, it may be recalled that at the last local government elections in 1994, the turnout was then about 32%. Um, many persons may also be aware that in the recently held general elections in Jamaica, the turnout was only 47%. So if our local government elections is anywhere close to that, I think it's a vindication that people are interested in the process. And even though it is a fact that there have only been, yesterday was only the second local government elections in, 40, in the last 45 years, it shows that um, our people are still want to participate in this process. Um, so I think we should wait on the final. And um, as far, there, outside of the end, there are a few um, communities in our country that um, are not currently uh, uh, an NDC area or have a local government organ or are a local government area. Principally, you, we have the area along the Suzdike Linden Highway from Yarrow Cabra to all the way to Linden, which has never been um, made into local government areas. And it has been identified that uh, now that these elections have been held, uh, those, it is, it, intended that the boundaries will be demarcated and, NDC, and 
local government areas will be created uh, along that stretch of the highway. There are also a few other communities. Uh, a few that come to mind are Rockstone and um, in Region 10. And then we have areas like um, um, there are a few other areas, including in the Rupununi, um, oh dear, this name escapes me, but there, there are a few other um, mixed communities in our hinterland areas that have been um, calling to be made into NDC areas, and this would also be a priority area uh, of the ministry. And the if I can just add, um, only a fortnight ago, uh, Minister of State and I were were at uh, Court Brad on the East Bank Babis, and they were asking to be included in an NDC. So there are communities, rural communities, which are not um, entitled to vote, um, so they couldn't um, vote, uh, although they were in the general region list, they were not, on the, uh, they were not able to vote um, yesterday. And don't forget, there's a whole region, region there's not a single um, neighborhood democratic council or a municipality in the entire region. So the numbers are misleading if, you, if one attempts to compare the numbers of persons who voted yesterday with the persons who voted in the general region election. There are huge areas of our population which, could not, which were not entitled to vote yesterday. So I think the, the, um, the claims of gloom and doom and flawed elections uh, I think are completely misplaced. And I agree with the Minister of State, we should wait until the GCOM makes an announcement because every Guyanese was not entitled to vote yesterday. Minister yeah. Lawrence, Minister Lawrence um, Ms. Fraser. Yeah, I heard the call. Um, I was told that the call was made to the President. The President has received no such call. But what I could say is that um, I, I will seek an explanation from Ms. Lawrence about the circumstances under which Mr. Harding was selected. Follow up. Vanessa Norton, Citizens Report. Um, Minister Herman, a uh, quick follow up on what you just said. Earlier, you mentioned that yesterday's vote was a demonstration of democratic renewal. Then, how do you reconcile that with the low turnout and the calls for yesterday to have been made a holiday? I, I don't think the three things are, are connected, but um, I will respond. <coughs> um, democratic renewal is, it is something, it is now the democracy is being renewed at all levels. And so when you have something happening for the, for the first time in some communities, um, you, you have uh, some hesitation, sometimes you have some skepticism about what, what is really, what it's all about. But eventually, I believe education solves that and the people's experience in their communities. And so I would say that um, they call the democratic renewal and the numbers, the turnout, as we indicated, um, while we don't have um, specific figures as yet officially from GCOM, <coughs> that um, from what we have within the AP and the AFC, um, I do believe that the turnout was, was satisfactory. In fact, if you, you check the elections in Canada, where the Prime Minister of Canada was elected, you know what was the turnout there? 30 something percent, and we elected a prime minister. So that in, in our communities, um, <clears throat> we, we are going to have to intensify this level of voter education and involvement of our people in the administration of their communities. And so um, I, I don't believe that, that the two things are, are connected. <clears throat> the third one about a holiday, you said, um, well, I think that was a decision which was made by the administration that there was no need for a holiday. I think that, um, that when you look at what actually happened, that um, it was a decision that was vindicated. <coughs> some people actually went to work, some left early so that they can have the time after work to go and vote. I'm, I'm rather suspect that some persons took the opportunity to come to work and then take the, the half of the day as a sort of a holiday, <laughs> so that they will take the lunch hour and then go to vote and say, well, look, the rest of the afternoon is my voting time. <clears throat> so that, that might have happened, but you know, Guyanese are very creative. So you don't have to, you don't have to call a holiday for them to take a holiday. Um, but what we did in fact see, in fact, I think we did put out a formal statement, was that people were entitled to vote 
and that employers were encouraged to give them time off to allow them to exercise um, their, that right. And um, we are happy to note <clears throat> that that call, by and large, it was embraced by not only um, government ministries, but by private uh, corporations and some mining companies. Um, <clears throat> a few days ago, we were told that there are some mining companies that they had some issues about the workers not getting the time to come and vote. Um, we had a, a conversation with them, and I believe that eventually we were able to resolve these differences, and people were uh, able to come out and vote. <clears throat> In fact, there's one newspaper article today which quotes, um, I believe, the Guyana Gold Fields as saying how much money they actually spent to ensure that the workers were able to come to, to their NDCs to be able to vote. So I believe that these, this demonstration of corporate citizenship and corporate responsibility is something that is going to catch on and that the next round, I believe, will be even better. Ivor Wharton, and then one final question. Minister Bokan, Ivor Wharton, Capital News. Now that the elections are over, could you say um, when exactly will the Local Government Commission um, be implemented and if you have begun identifying commissioners? The local government... The operationalization uh, of the Local Government Commission is expected to be fairly imminent. Uh, we have been uh, engaged recently in a search for suitable premises, and we have not been able to identify any government properties that are suitable uh, for this purpose. So it may require uh, rental of suitable premises, but it is expected that uh, that commission will be operational uh, very shortly. Final question. Is that going to be you, Jomo? Uh, Mr. President, we're hearing reports that uh, Ms. Chase Green, Oscar Clark, and uh, Sherrod Duncan have been shortlisted as possible mayoral candidates in the Georgetown municipality. Any comments on this? The, the, the mayors will only be uh, elected when the councils convene. And this hasn't happened yet. Uh, I have been credited with some powers of prophecy, but um, I cannot, at this point in time, indicate who will be the mayor in the various um, uh, municipalities, the nine municipalities that we've now created. Any favorites from you? Any? Favorites? No, no, I'm a Democrat, you know. I let the people speak. Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, kindly. Um